Hello and good afternoon. Um, I'm Nick Gunner. I'm the engineering manager for Safeway Custom Fluid Transfer. This is my colleague, Chris Lee, who is a mechanical engineer with WeWin. And today we'll be giving an update on our progress in developing the ORV3 blind mate liquid cooling components. So on the blind mate valves, since our last update, our focus goals have been on trying to reduce the uh, mate and demate forces and binding that we were seeing in previous rounds of testing, as well as to try to further standardize the flow performance uh, across all of the quick coupling suppliers um, and all the, the combinations that could occur between them. So in order to support this work, the team first began by spending some time brainstorming potential solutions uh, to address the, the high mate forces that we were seeing in our previous testing. And they did some work to go ahead and create their own proof of concept samples, try them out, and report their results back to the, the full team to review. Um, and that gave us the opportunity to choose a few of uh, the, the leading concepts that we were interested in. And then we all went back out and created our own versions of those concepts, tested them on site, and once again reported the results back to the team. Uh, the result of that effort is what you see on screen right now, which is a, a single unified design concept that drastically lowered the, the mate and demate forces. Uh, and it did this by increasing the leverage so that the plug could overcome the forces that were applied to the uh, hose, or the hose forces applied to the plug half. Um, it also drastically smoothed out the con connection stroke by improving the pre-alignment as the connection is made. Uh, the downside to the design is that it did require a slightly longer physical size than our previous concepts. Um, but the, the trade-off definitely seems worth it. So once a single design concept was chosen, the next step was to go ahead and uh, plan out a full interoperability build to test everything out and make sure that the design worked as well as we had hoped. And so the components to support this build were completed in early 2023, at which point all of the manufacturers had a chance to test their own designs together, uh, which is what I'm trying to illustrate in the image on the upper right-hand corner of the screen. So you can see that we're using color to denote the four quick connector suppliers. And we just started by plugging the same colors together and making sure that each of the manufacturers was happy with their own performance. Um, if we found anything that, uh, the, that they weren't happy with, they had a, uh, a period of time to make design changes, run new samples, retest, and make sure that everything worked well. And then we sent everything out for testing at test sites uh, all over the world to, to do the interoperability testing. So that test phase was completed in the middle of the year. Generally speaking, we had uh, very positive results, uh, but we did find a few opportunities for better uniformity and performance. So I mentioned early on that one of our uh, focus goals was on reducing the valve mate forces uh, and the mate forces and binding. And the um, chart that you see on screen illustrates our progress in doing so. Uh, but there's a lot going on here, so we'll just walk through it together. So the, the green line that you see is a, a force versus mate distance curve that is typical of what we had seen in previous more problematic rounds of testing whereas the blue line represents uh, a typical, typical test cycle on our most recent round of testing. And you'll notice that the forces were cut uh, roughly in half, which is a, a great result. Uh, but in addition to that, you'll notice that the uh, large spikes on the green curve on the upper and lower portions were either um, reduced or completely eliminated. And so uh, this, is, this is a good re result, and this is what we were looking for. Um, the other thing that we did was develop a, a force versus mate distance boundary curve, which is represented on the chart by the red lines. And the expectation here is that the entirety of the mate demate cycle should fall within these red lines. You'll notice that the green cycle violates that boundary curve quite a lot, whereas the, the blue cycle falls within the, the boundary. And this would be what we consider a passing cycle and the desired goal. However, it's important to note that not every combination and every cycle fell within these boundaries. And that's one of the last few things that we're trying to um, shore up before we uh, release the spec. So our second focus goal was on further improving our, our flow performance. And so to support that work, uh, we collected 128 data points at the critical flow rate. 
all but five of those data points fell within the specified range. Uh, and the five that didn't, we felt could be explained by uh, measurement uncertainty. So this is also a good result. This is, um, you know, we consider this to be a passing result. However, we're a little bit concerned um, as we make these things at scale that we just want to focus and, and get everything to flow as uniformly as possible uh, to make sure that, that things don't drift outside of the uh, established range. Um, outside of that, one of our expectations is that the, uh, when the valves are disconnected, and the forces are removed from the plug half, the, the valves should pop back to center so that they're ready to, to go again for the next connect cycle. And generally speaking, this worked pretty well, but we did find a, a, a few issues with this that we're, that we're still trying to shore up. And uh, when we studied the spillage, we feel that the spillage is in line with other similar designs, uh, but when we compared test results, we noticed some, uh, some differences, uh, and that caused us to dig into that uh, into those test results a little bit farther, compare methods, we found a, a few more differences there. And that's one more thing that we're, we just want to make sure that we're studying it well enough. Um, we also noticed that the uh, test pressure has a, can have a, a drastic effect on the amount of spillage. And so that's something we're studying so that we can provide good, um, good information to the community as we move forward. So that brings us to our current valve build that is underway, and the, the components for this build were just completed uh, a few weeks ago in September 2023. Uh, this design is reflective of all the updates that we feel are necessary to address the problems that um, I just mentioned. Um, in addition to that, we spent some time further standardizing our test fixtures and our setup parameters um, to make sure that we're getting the results that we need, and that testing is currently underway. Um, I just want to pause here for a moment, too, to give everybody a second opportunity. Um, in the previous presentation, we mentioned that the preliminary uh, design spec has been released. So if you're interested in the BlindMate quick connectors um, or any of the other components that, uh, that Chris is about to uh, talk with you about, um, it is available at the QR code on screen, and that includes contacts and, uh, and the ability to get samples to, to check them out. Um, so that brings us to our plans for our uh, future testing. So the plan for the build that was just completed is to go back and retest everything that we have already previously tested on, on our previous rounds. Um, and then we'll include the, the full-scale interoperability testing, uh, including flow performance, uh, connect forces, spillage, and a, a list of other tests. But in addition to that, we've gained enough confidence in the design that we're going to go ahead and move forward with environmental and transportation-related testing as well. And that will include temperature and humidity cycling, corrosion resistance, packaging, vibration, and extreme temperatures, just so that we're uh, trying to cover all of our bases for uh, what the designs might experience in their normal life cycles and make sure that we're delivering a quality product. So that's all that I have for the, the valve updates. And now I'm going to uh, turn it over to Chris. OK. Thank you, Nick. And uh, now I'm going to talk about a meaningful update. And uh, we have three key updates on the manifold. And the first one, we made minor structural design changes, particularly in the mounting interface. These changes involve slight adjustments to the physical layout. And we aim at simplifying the assembly process. And the second one is about the top and bottom connection option. Uh, the users can now choose to connect at the top, button, or both. And depending on their specific requirements, and we aim at uh, thereby achieving maximum flexibility. And the third one is about the host connection option. We no longer employ fixed lower bars, but instead offer a variety of connection option methods, including swivel option on elbow. This allows for uh, greater maneuverability and adaptability for the host connection. And uh, the second one is bar connection option and uh, a traditional but reliable choice for host connection. And the third one is uh, OCP LQD option. And uh, uh, we are offering uh, compatibility uh, of quick disconnected system. And uh, the latest one is about the uh, plug option. And uh, we're providing another versatile choice for the users. And uh, in addition to these goals, We've conducted uh, various tests and uh, experiments to validate our improvements. And then the first one, we conducted 
uh, rigorous flow test at the rack level. Examine scenarios with four, eight, and 12 chassis, each equipped with uh, four QC plugs. And our objective was to understand the flow variation under different configuration. And remarkably, we found that the flow variation remains under 5% even with eight chassis operating at 40 RPM. And besides, uh, the tests revealed that the location of the ch chassis does not impact this variation. And the second one is about uh, we conducted the experimental testing across the manifold. And we're focusing on flow rates at 40 LPN. And the pressure drop stay below 1 PSI. And uh, this, uh, test, this allows to this allow us to gain insights into that the performance of manifold under different conditions. And uh, the most important of all, uh, to ensure our uh, accuracy, to, to ensure the accuracy of our flow predictions and the simulations, we collaborated our flow network model. And this collaboration was a critical step in guaranteeing that our theoretical model aligned closely with real performance. And uh, according to the simulation result, uh, the pressure drop stayed below 3.5 PSI at 80 RPM. And uh, one more thing we'd like to mention is uh, we will conduct testing at a higher flow rates above 60 LPN towards the end of this year. So we will have more data on the flow variation. And the above are all for the manifold updates. And now, let's dive right into uh, what we have been doing on Chelsea since our last update. So on the left side, you can see that uh, we made uh, changes to a location of QC mounting service. And this tweak was all about optimizing the QC mat, demat force, and addressing any binding issues since we also lengthened the uh, QC plug and the socket. And we want to make sure the QC mating process goes as smoothly as possible. And uh, these changes help us to achieve that. And uh, on the right side, um, we also optimize the mechanical advantage of our injector design. And uh, it's crucial that uh, the injector can provide a high mechanical advantage during the long QC mating uh, process. And uh, this ensures that everything operates efficiently and effectively. And one more thing, we improve our uh, injector for open lock function to avoid any interference between the injector handle and the, and the rack frame. It's essential to keep the handle in position, and we use a spring latch mechanism to securely hold the handle in place and preventing it from being pulled back by the extension spring. And uh, these are all about uh, chassis update. And now let's talk about the uh, leak test. And uh, on the left side, this is a leak test feature we are using now. And this is a concept. And uh, as you can see, uh, we have some key components on the leak test feature, including uh, pressure gauge and dummy manifold with QC socket and some mechanical parts used as rack frame. And on the right side, we have two test loop. The bypass loop use, is used to uh, uh, verify the connections between QC plug, socket, and the tubing. And the corporate loop is used to verify the QC plug, socket, and system manifold, and tubing, and the corporates. And uh, we want to mention that it is important uh, to uh, complete the leak test before any L10 or L11 shipping. And now, Let's uh, talk about what's next for us. We will complete the testing for the uh, latest build. And also, we will do more host routing study, including uh, evaluating the alternative uh, tube types or materials, and the alternative tube uh, routing scenarios uh, for more flexible application. And uh, if you are interested in uh, ORV3 biomedical cooling, welcome to join us by this call to action page. Thank you. So, any questions? Yeah, hi there. Thank you. 
Um, you'd mentioned that the uh, preliminary spec has been released. Do you anticipate the final spec having significant changes, or did the preliminary spec capture most of the, the uh, improvements that you, you found last year or this year? Sure. So uh, the preliminary spec is um, mostly uh, reflective of, of what we expect the final design to be. We're still looking into certain things like um, pressures and what the final forces will be uh, to, to finalize, finalize a few things, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's fairly reflective currently. Do I understand it correctly that the latch is a kind of a required component to use with the BMQC? The specific latch that OCP designed for this? Um, right, yep, so that's, that's part of the system that, that holds, the, uh, holds them together. Is that latch design uh, part of the OCP group? Like, we can find the design files and everything? Uh no, that's the design. You mean the, the injector, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, we will share the CAD in preliminary document, including the CAD. Yeah, so you can find the CAD on the pre preliminary document. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you.